Uh oh, AMD may have spoken a bit too soon when they took shots at Nvidia for their melting problem as now users are reporting thermal problems with their latest RDNA 3 graphics cards. Yikes. Also, the RTX 4070 Ti's are starting to ship to merchants and in some areas they're already on sale? Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Just to give you guys a quick update, I've finally gotten around to upgrading my test bench with my 13700KF. I'm still working on tuning the system to where I want it, but I gotta say it feels good to be back on an Intel platform because if you like tweaking, their platform sure delivers. Anyways, moving on, and I wanted to talk about some recent concerning reports from users who have gotten their hands on AMD's latest RX 7900 series graphics cards. This story comes from a site called Extreme Tech, and they're sourcing Hardware Lux, which is a popular hardware site and forum in Germany. They tested various RX 7900 series graphics cards, including reference AMD models, along with custom aftermarket AIB models. In their findings, they discovered that when it came to the reference cards, the delta between the GPU core and hotspot temps was as large as 50 degrees celsius which is definitely not normal and not ideal for performance. Typically for previous gen models the delta would be around that 15 to 20 degrees celsius mark however you can see that from the results of those aftermarket AIB cards they tested the delta isn't nearly as large as what they attained from the reference models. The hotspot is exactly that it's the hottest part of the GPU die when the GPU is under load. When I tested the RTX 4090 graphics card in my review, specifically the MSI Gaming X Trio model, I found the delta between the GPU core and hotspot to be around 10 degrees Celsius, which is considered to be really good. Ideally, you want the hotspot temperature to, of course, be as low as possible, but also be as close as possible to the GPU core temp. The reason for this is because all modern chips, whether it be a CPU or GPU, have temperature sensors. Programmed in these chips are thresholds where once the GPU hits that temperature target, they start to throttle down their clock speeds, so they can reduce temps and therefore prevent the chip from overheating and potentially frying itself or undergoing severe degradation. The issue here is that even though the GPU core is running at an acceptable and totally safe temperature, just because one spot on the package is running extremely hot, it seems to cause the clock speeds to throttle down when they really shouldn't be, and thus this is impacting overall performance. Extreme Tech mentioned that one theory that's going around is that there seems to be a discrepancy in the Z height of the chiplets where the MCDs aren't sitting even with the GCD and the cold plate on the reference model isn't making proper contact. It may not look like it at first, but when it comes to cooling a GPU, even the smallest 0.1mm difference can make a pretty severe impact, which is where thermal pads and paste come into play. This article was also posted on the AMD subreddit, and there were other users posting comments about how they are noticing these large deltas for their RX 7900 series graphics cards, at least the reference models. One user even posted they saw deltas of around 40 degrees Celsius, which is just insane and yeah, not normal. However, after reapplying their own pads and paste, they managed to get the junction temps in check. However, this is a $1,000 GPU. Again, users shouldn't have to open up the card, repaste it, swap thermal pads, and check torque on the screws. All of this should have been tested during QC when the cards were being manufactured. The original article over at the Hardware Lux forums has been updated where they did mention AMD is aware of the problem affecting users and are looking into it, but that's really been about it. So this is just really displeasing and also comical to see. AMD at their presentation took jabs at Nvidia for making their cards too large and mocked the whole power adapter situation at the same time. And now they're dealing with their own thermal issues with their reference graphics cards. I recall when I was looking at various reviews, one of the main takeaways I had was how many reviewers show testing results varying so widely, where in some cases the GPU performed great, and in some instances it was doing very poorly. Paul from the YouTube channel Not an Apple Fan talked recently about his experience being greatly varied and him seeing the card hit high clocks in some instances, but he just wasn't seeing the performance that he expected. I'm not sure if these high junction temperatures or large deltas between the GPU core and hotspot are playing a role into that, but RDNA 3 has been looking like such an unfinished product. From strange benchmark results, missed performance targets, driver related problems, weird clock speed behavior, and now thermal issues from what could be a design defect of the GCDs and MCDs. This launch has definitely not gone the way AMD had hoped. Oh, and as I was making this video, another user on the AMD subreddit posted how they tried to RMA their card because of this exact issue, but were denied because AMD or at least their RMA department claims the behavior is normal. $1,000 graphics card and this is the quality of service you receive, it's not really acceptable. 
I have a feeling as more and more people start reporting the problem, AMD will have to eventually offer RMAs to these people regardless of their return window or maybe even send out thermal pad replacements. I don't know, we'll see. Moving on and I wanted to talk about a post from video cards who are sourcing a user on Reddit. This person posted a picture of what appears to be a custom Gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti model, which is already on sale in Serbia for a whopping 1400 USD. That's a really steep price and is most definitely far from what the actual MSRP will be for this GPU. I'm not sure if it's a region thing where tech is generally overpriced in Serbia. I don't know if someone from there wants to let me know in the comments, please chime in. Maybe it's a placeholder price or if it's the retailer just taking advantage. They also showed another picture from a Costa Rican retailer who appears to have a stack of MSI RTX 4070 Ti's in their inventory. The fact that we're seeing retailers have stock for these graphics cards already confirms that we will indeed be seeing an official launch of this graphics card at CES that will also be its official release day. Circling back to the price, I don't think the 4070 Ti will sell for 1400 USD, obviously, that's that would be ridiculous, it's higher than what the 4080 goes for. But given what has transpired recently in the market and the reception of AMD's RX 7900 series, I would not be surprised to see Nvidia launch the 4070 Ti at its original 899 price point back when it was originally called the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte. Now, I've gone over various reasons in my videos as to why this card really shouldn't be more than 500 bucks, but given the current market circumstances and the fact that since this will be the cheapest 40 series graphics card, it will sell out, no doubt, and will be the most popular amongst the 40 series. Definitely more popular than the 4080, and it's really only because of the fact that it's the cheapest card people can get their hands on. And if it's as fast as a 3090 Ti, or let's say it's about 5% slower on average, then people will go after this card. I mean, stock for the 3090 and 3090 Ti has dried up, and if you do find them in stock, they're going for ridiculous prices from third-party sellers. So I can see most people just saying, you know what, I have no choice, I might as well just buy this. Speaking of performance, we also have a leaked result from the Octane Bench benchmark. This was reported by Stefan3D from the Laptop Video to Go forum, and in this table we can see the 4070 Ti just slightly edging out the RTX 3090 Ti. Now, I'm actually not too familiar with this benchmark, but typically when it comes to these kinds of synthetic results, they don't necessarily translate to real-world performance, and we have seen from Nvidia's own first-party benchmarks showing the 4070 Ti, aka the 4080 12GB, lose to the RTX 3090 Ti. I'd say just temper your expectations, don't expect this 4070 Ti to be faster than a 3090 Ti for like 600 bucks, otherwise you're going to be severely disappointed. But that's basically all I have for you guys for this video. Things are a bit quiet right now due to the holidays, but as we roll into the new year and kick things off with CES 2023, we should have plenty of more hardware news to talk about. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.